Okay, today we're going to run through setting up a Wi phone to use your own secure, self hosted firmware update server. And that's going to let you control exactly what software gets loaded onto your phone. Most phones are probably going to come with some sort of proprietary firmware update mechanism that you're basically forced to accept whatever firmware updates your phone manufacturer supports you with or doesn't support you with. Uh, probably you're also going to be uh, connected to an app store that uh, along with the apps you actually want bundles in things like trackers and, and advertisements that you probably don't want. Um, so the Wi Phone takes a different approach. The firmware is open source and you can pretty easily uh, self-host your own firmware update server which really does give you uh, almost complete control over the software that is on your phone. So the way firmware updates work is relatively straightforward. The phone will ask the server what the current version of the software is, and if that's newer than what's on the phone, it will download it and then try to boot into it. Uh, if that fails, it will roll back and then wait for a newer version to show up on, this, on the server. Uh, if it succeeds, then it will just check again later until there's a new version and then the process repeats. Uh, that does, this does require some config and a few files in different places, and we'll go over the details here. Uh, the phone has to store the update URL, that's what it checks to see if there's a new version available on the server. It also so, uh, stores a security cert, uh, which lets the process happen, the communication happen securely, because that's the HTTPS. On the server, uh, there's a file, an INI file that stores whatever the current version number of the software is and also stores a URL for the actual firmware binary. And the firmware binary is also stored on that, on that server. Uh, the final bit of config is there's a, there's a DNS record that will be needed to translate the, the update URL that's stored on the phone into an IP address that's, that's what's going to actually let the phone contact the server. Uh, when I do this, uh, I might use, uh, for the certs, I might use Let's Encrypt. For DNS, I might use something like Namecheap. Uh, for the server, I'll probably use a VPS, and DigitalOcean might provide that. And then the, the web server might be something like Nginx or Apache. Okay, before we jump into this, let's go over a couple reasons why you might want to do it. The simple one is you've made some sort of a customization to the Wi-Phone firmware and you want to run it on your phone. This is a pretty easy way to manage that, whether it's every day or like you're doing development work and you want to push the firmware to the phone without using wires. A couple others would be like maybe you have a small business and you want to have a phone-like device that maybe has some added capabilities. Uh, you can do the dev work to add it to the phone and then uh, set up your own firmware server and manage pushing firmware updates that way. Uh, another reason might be maybe you want to develop some sort of a device that is similar enough to the phone that you could start with the Wi Phone, add either a daughter board or some custom firmware, and then resell it. And then you would manage your own firmware updates using your firmware server that you've set up. So those are a few scenarios. I'm sure there are others, uh, but if you fall into any of those categories, this would be a pretty good solution for you. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is set up a server. And to do that, I'm gonna log into DigitalOcean and make a VPS, and they call them droplets. So, so that's what we're gonna do. I tend to like to use Debian. Uh, the cheapest server is probably going to be fine for this unless you're going to stick something else on here. Let's go with San Francisco. And I have some SSH keys set up that let me log in pretty easily. Uh, I would recommend doing that over, over using a password, but if you want to use a password, you can do that. That's it, create it, and then wait for it to boot up, 
And the important thing here is we want to get the IP address, which is what we're going to need for setting up DNS. Okay, once the IP address shows up, you can copy that, and then you're done. You're done with DigitalOcean, and the next thing to do would be uh, set up your, your DNS, or if you don't have a URL yet, you'll need to uh, purchase a domain. So the next thing you're going to want to do is set up DNS, or if you don't have a domain yet, you'll need to buy a domain. Um, I'm going to show how to do both of those using Namecheap, but there are a lot of other providers that can do exactly the same thing. So start by doing a domain name search. And if you happen to be named Tom and the domain is available, you'll add it to the cart. And check out. Once the checkout is complete, you can click on the little Manage button, go to Advanced DNS, and then you're going to want to set up a, an A record that points to uh, the IP address from the server you set up on uh, well, DigitalOcean or wherever you, you have a VPS or another server. And then if you want to if you want to be able to access your server through the bare URL or through www, you'll want uh, you want two A records. You want one for www and one for the ampersand signal or the at signal. Okay, save the records and then uh, once that's done, you should be able to SSH into the server and uh, set up the the web server Nginx or Apache or something along those lines. So now we're going to edit the Nginx config and normally you'd probably want to make a special file for your own your own domain here but I'm just going to edit the default config file and set the server name to same as our domain CertBot to get the certifications. And then choosing two here will uh, let the CertBot change your Nginx config files so that so that the HTTPS works. Uh, and then we're done. We should be ready if we go. We go back over here now. It should allow us to do a secure connection. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, at this point we've got Nginx and Let's Encrypt installed and working on the server. Now we need to grab one of the PIM files from the certification on the server and uh, move that onto the phone. And we're going to do that by first copying it onto uh, the local development computer. Uh, and you're going to want to have the Wi Phone firmware set up somewhere on that. And there's a data folder inside the, the firmware folder. And the PIM file needs to go there. And the name should be user.pim. Uh, that's what the Wi Phone firmware expects. So once that's done, we will also need to edit the uh, OTA.ini file, which is also in the data folder. And that tells the phone where to look for firmware updates. It's going to check that URL to see if there's a new firmware version available. So 
oh, once we got that done, uh, we're gonna use uh, the, there's a tool in, in the uh, Arduino uh, system for uploading data onto an ESP32. And we're gonna, we're gonna use that to write the data files uh, to the phone. Um, that will overwrite any files that are already on the phone, so you wanna be aware of that. Okay, to upload data, go to Tools, ESP32, Sketch Data Upload, and then it will automatically grab the files and data and put them on the phone. Now, presumably you've already got some firmware version on your phone, and the next step is gonna to be to increment that and then compile. All right, there you go. Now with a little bit of setup, you've got a secure way to push firmware updates to your own phone without any middlemen involved.